This video is for students, MYP students, who are studying design and they are doing Criterion B, Summative Assessment Document, and they're wanting to get top marks. They want to get a score of 8 out of 8. So this video here, I'm going to focus on Criterion B Strand 2 and, exactly, and tell you exactly what you need to include so you can guarantee getting top marks. Okay, let's start by reading the assessment criteria. So top marks, you need to develop a range of feasible design ideas using appropriate mediums and detailed annotations which can be correctly interpreted by others. And you'll notice I've highlighted some words, range, uh, feasible design ideas, uh, detailed annotation, and also the correctly interpreted by others. So, so there's some of the things I'm gonna expand on a little bit later. Okay, so first of all, just be aware that you've just finished Criterion A. So Criterion A is where you do your research and you understand what the actual problem is and you've created a design brief so you're aware of what you're actually going to build and create. Um, but right now, you're probably still not completely sure what your product's going to look like. So this is where Criterion B Strand 2 comes in handy. This is where you start to um, develop some ideas. So because it's an iterative uh, develop, development uh, process, when you first start Strand 2, you're probably going to just be um, you're going to have undeveloped ideas and that's perfectly fine that's actually part of the process so with this in mind this is where you can just some brainstorm and just start scratching out some ideas just come up with all sorts of ideas there's no such thing as a bad idea um, it's better to have a lot of ideas so this is where it comes in handy to do something like uh, somewhat just little just get like an a4 piece of paper or an a3 piece of paper and you just go and map out a few different concepts and ideas about what you might want to build and create as a finished product. Um, so this is the initial stage of this uh, uh, iterative fashion of development. Um, now, when you start, once you've done that, that stage, you then start to, okay, now I've got a bit of an idea, just say I've just scribbled out 10 different ideas, really quick ones, like two or three minutes on each idea. Now I'm gonna develop a couple of good ideas in a little bit more detail. Um, now, the, the concept here is how are you actually going to present them? There's a variety of, depends on what you're actually making. Um, and that's why they're focusing on that word about appropriate medium or mediums. So you might try a variety of ways of actually um, presenting your ideas and concepts. Um, now just be aware with your ideas too. You can have wonderful ideas, you can have mediocre ideas, you can have bad ideas, weird ideas, strange ideas. These are all fine. This is where you just uh, develop your ATL creative thinking skills and just come out, come up with a lot of ideas. Um, now, I've got a list here of a couple of ways you could produce your ideas. First of all, you just use words. You could just write some bullet points or paragraphs explaining what your idea is, then explain the next idea, and then explain the next idea. So words are fine. You may want to do some sketching. So this is where you might want to incorporate some of your technical drawing skills. Um, and if you're, particularly if you're making some kind of a product in a workshop, this is where your technical drawing skills uh, can come in handy and you can even develop some of your technical drawing skills. So I'm talking about isometric drawing, or orthographic draw drawing, these kind of things. Um, now the other thing, you can actually make some prototypes as well. So maybe you're cutting out foam or using clay. This is another way to kind of uh, present some of your ideas, another medium. Um, you can also use devices as well. You can use a computer or an iPad to actually uh, create some of these devices. So you can use pe pe paper, pencils, clay, computers, whatever it is, what is the best way for you to present this idea? Uh, anything is fine here, as long as, as long as it's appropriate. And also somebody else can understand it. So when they look at your idea, they can understand actually what your, what your concept is. Now, if you, you want to get top marks, you also need to annotate. So once you've developed your ideas, so a range of ideas, now, Range of ideas, it could be anywhere between say three and 10 ideas. I think we've already covered this area, uh, the, the concept of range in previous videos, but that's the kind of thing you're looking for. Somewhere between three and 10 is what you would consider a range of ideas. Um, now, once you've got your three to 10 ideas, you need to annotate. So that means just get some, uh, annotation is where you draw, uh, add some words to your images or your models. Uh, that helps communicate some of the main features and details of whatever it is you're making. Now, if you're struggling to work out what to actually write, you can go back to your design specifications. So if you recall, we've created the design specifications. 
and when, it, when I suggested in a previous video was create a table for your design specifications. Um, now all you're looking at, you don't need all the details of your design specifications, you just need the main points. Um, so for example, if you've identified that colour was an important aspect or one of the design specifications, when you're annotating your idea in Strand 3, you should talk about colour. So you say this idea is going to be these kind of colours and these are the reasons why uh, I'm going to be, I suggest these colours. So this is the kind of thing you do with your annotation. Uh, the other thing, if you're still struggling to uh, work out what, how to annotate, you can also go back to the design and technology concept of Access FM, just as your guide. So what is the form? What is the function? Uh, who is going to be the, the, the user of this? The, these kind of things. Uh, so annotations are very, very important if you want to get top marks. And top marks also need detailed annotation. So the easiest way to do that was identify a feature and then expand on it or explain it or justify it. Um, so you might say, as I mentioned with the color example, this will be blue. That's not detailed. What kind of blue? Why don't you even get the hex code? Then you can also tell me about some of the uh, color theory involved in blues and how it matches with other colors. Or you can even talk about color psychology. What are the kind of moods and emotions associated with the color blue? This is how you take the color and expand on it and make an annotation a detailed annotation. Um, and I've also suggested things like, for example, this product will be green. The kind of green it will be, will be the Starbucks green. So actually that is quite a detail. I know exactly what kind of green you want. Uh, now the last point here I've also made is about that it needs to be understood by somebody else. So it's, uh, it's a, it's quite common when you're creating something you're in your own world and you're in your own mind and it makes sense to you but when somebody else looks at it it doesn't actually make sense so this is where it's actually handy to show some of your ideas to a friend and just see what they think about it and if they don't understand certain things for example the size how big is the thing that you're making i say how big is this oh yeah okay i'll add that that's an annotation you can make to help communicate the idea to a third party so somebody else's eyes on this can be really handy to tell you what they don't not sure about, um, what kind of fabric you're going to use, or what kind of functionality it's going to have, or which software you're going to use, whatever it might be. They might have some questions. Then you can jot down some annotations to help explain your ideas. Okay, now I want to show you a couple of examples of what Criterion B Strand 2 could look like. So first of all, we've talked about the concept of a mood board early. Uh, it's kind of in strand two, it's kind of a mood board, but it's more of a focused about what the product. So it's, you feel free at the start of strand two just to come up with lots of little quick sketch, like ideation time. So come up with lots of creative ideas. It's better to have lots and lots and lots of ideas uh, than not too many ideas. Because if you've got lots and lots of little ideas, you can then take the next step and develop some of those ideas better. So a mood board can help. Uh, now here's an example of Okay, if it was a unit about fashion design, so here's a very good six, there's six examples of products and they're very well drawn. So that's, I, when, when anyone looks at those products, they know, okay, I get the six concepts. So this student here might be saying, I, you know, the design being might be about creating uh, an outfit for a certain person or a target audience and here are their six ideas. Now, you might be making a website so here, what, what is the home page going to look like? So here, the student has drawn four different home page layout styles. So that's a range of ideas. That's a range of home page layout ideas. Uh, the next one, you might be creating a short film or a short story. So here is one idea and it's presented through the storyboard. Now also you can start, the, 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 the first two examples are just the ideas and drawings, visuals. But now with this example, we're actually adding some words, which is your annotation. Now here's another example of uh, packaging. Here are six, no, five, five different packaging ideas and they're annotated as well. Here's another one. Here's lots and lots of little ideas with annotations as well. And this is, this is a furniture project. Now this one here, this is from a grade 10 student and it is they're very, there's six very clear different design ideas there. And these design ideas were created with some CAD software. 
and the, these ones definitely have detailed annotations. So this is the kind of thing that would be getting top marks. Clear concepts with detailed annotation that anyone can look at and understand. Now another thing here is the example of just three, you know, four, four kind of story ideas that are just presented. Uh, now, let's focus in on the word medium. Medium is basically a way of communicating. So whether it's words through drawings, whatever it might be, you choose whatever is appropriate for you to communicate your ideas, your range of ideas. Okay, I'm gonna conclude now with a focus on the assessment criteria. So with the assessment criteria, uh, the difference between getting low marks and high marks. So first of all, if you only come up with one idea, you're not gonna get more than two out of eight, two marks. Uh, now, if you come up with a few feasible ideas, you can get up to four. But if you have a range of ideas, you can get a top grade of six. But remember that the, the, the range of ideas also need to be feasible. So when somebody looks at it, considering the design brief, your idea is a feasible solution. Now, what else do you need to get top marks? We're now gonna focus on the annotations. So you cannot get a score of more than four if you don't have any annotations. Now, if you have basic annotations, you can get top marks of six, but if you have detailed annotation, you can get top marks eight. So the, the concept here is if we look at the differentiation, first of all, it's developing one idea. If you've got one idea, let's try and become, make it a few ideas, then to get top marks, you want a range of feasible ideas. Also, when you come to annotation, when you start annotating, basic annotation, okay, now let's convert it into detailed annotation. And that's how you get top marks for strand two in Criterion B. Good luck with your project.